And then earlier in that chapter, it says, we who have died to sin, how could we live in sin a moment longer? Have you forgotten that all of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were by that very action sharing in his death? It's a picture of coming out of Egypt when they came through the Red Sea. Baptism in the New Testament was a picture of what Israel did when they came out of slavery. They were literally in slavery in Egypt. We were in slavery to sin. So when you got baptized in front of everybody, you were making a public statement. I'm not going back to that old way anymore. I'm serving Jesus now. The old man passed away. I'm coming out new. That's what he's saying. It's a symbolic way of representing that we were sharing in his death. We were dead and buried with him in baptism. And here's the good part. Just as he was raised from the dead by the Father's power, so we too might rise to life on a new plane. Right? That's that that's idea that as you cast off those weights, you can, you can go higher. The things of this world don't hold you down anymore. You can run faster because you're not weighed down. You're on a whole other plane of life. Because those things that pulled you down before, that, that, that cord that was pulling you down has been cut by the deliverance that you've walked through. That you took a step of faith and God freed you from an addiction as an example. But that's not all, Right? And then it says in Romans 8, I'm sorry, Romans 6, verse 8, and if we were dead men with him, we can believe that we shall also be newly alive with him. How about you? I don't know. I've been trying a really long time. I can't kick this habit. Oh, yes, on your own, maybe not, but with God's help, anything is possible. We sang that. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. <laughs> we can be sure that the risen Christ never dies again. Death's power to touch him is finished. He died because of sin once. He lives for God forever. In the same way, look upon yourselves as dead to the appeal and power of sin. What is it? Each of us has some kind of different weakness in our immune system. Right? We're, we're all human beings in this world. We're all Christians and we're trying to pull on the power of God and live heavenly lives in a sinful, earthly world. So we need to know what the weak spots are, and we need to shut doors. Again, like for me, again, this is just my own little personal example. I wasn't going to ever drink again after I got saved. I didn't want to have that first drink. I, I had shown, basically, I said I, I met my quota at the age of 25. I drank enough alcohol by 25 for my whole life. I didn't need one more drink. Right? And I haven't really missed it. But that doesn't mean I have to tell you all to do that. Because each of us have a different place of what door needs to be shut. Even my wife, you, you would think, she, because she's prophetic, she's very sensitive. And sometimes a good movie that I think is a good movie, it's just because she's sensitive in the spirit. If she sees things happening, she'll think about it for weeks. Right? So that might be a, a door, not necessarily for a movie. But she reacts in a way to, to shut that door. I don't even want to let that in. Yeah, it might be good for some people, but I know me, and I'm not letting that in. Now, yeah, you could say that's legalistic because we're free in the Lord. Yeah, that, that could be a little bit like what the devil was trying to say to Jesus. Just throw yourself off this mountain, and he said his angels are giving charge over you, right? Well, no, I know who I am in Christ, and I'm growing into who I want to be, and I put boundaries around my life. We don't counsel one-on-one uh, -on -one at, at 20 Church Street, a man with a woman with a door closed. Are you kidding me? How, how naive that would be. There's always got to be two people when we're meeting with somebody, not because we're suspicious of the per specific person, but if you set up a policy now, you've just closed the door to a potential accusation. Use wisdom, right? So dead to the appeal and power of sin, but alive to the call of God through Jesus Christ. So we know in the natural, there's things you could do to strengthen your natural immune system. We've just been through three years of COVID. You, you got a whole education about the immune system, right? It's, God, comorbidities. That was kind of like a common word never heard before, comorbidity. Yeah, well, there are certain things that if, that if you have other diseases, the, the I don't know, other attacks coming at your body, you're more likely to be severely tested by COVID than somebody who doesn't, right? Okay, so it's no different. It's no different in the spiritual realm. Natural and spiritual parallel each other. 
So let's just think about Luke uh, 15, and it's a tremendous chapter. I'm not going to go into a long teaching on it. It's known mostly as the uh, story of the prodigal son, but it's way more than just the story of the prodigal son. So let's touch on that idea, though, of repentance strengthens immunity. The young man, we know that this was the younger son who asked the father, I want my inheritance now. That would have been an insult to the father. He took it and he squandered it and he ended up in poverty, working for a man. He had no money. And he says, the young man felt so miserably hungry that he wished he could eat the slop that the pigs were eating. There's a word picture for you. That's the wages of sin. Slop. And if you've been there, you know what it's like. And not something you would ever want to go back to. Nobody gave him anything. In the voice translation, it says, so he had this moment of self-reflection. That's how repentance strengthens your immune system. In another translation, New Living Translation, it says, when he finally came to his senses. And another one says, he began to think about what he had done. That's called repentance. You're thinking about your thinking process. And you realize the definition of insanity, come on, you know it, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, right? So if I keep ending up in the pigsty, I got a bad program in my computer. I need to reprogram myself. I got to change the way I'm thinking about my thinking. Stop medicating my pain and get healed of the pain, as one example. So he said to himself, what am I doing here? How did I end up in a pigsty? That's called rock bottom. And that can be a really good place to awaken you. If you know anything about Teen Challenge, they're often dealing with teenagers at Teen Challenge, but younger people, and the families are so desperate to try to get them help that often the mom will call up Teen Challenge and said, my son needs a bed. And the men at Teen Challenge have been doing this so long, they say, sorry, Mom, we can't give a bed unless he calls and unless we know he really has hit rock bottom. Because if he's coming here because you want him to come, then we're using up a bed for somebody who really wants to be here. That sounds cruel. I thought Christians were supposed to be nice. But this is tough love, right? This is tough love. They've got to understand that there's consequences. Jesus told the woman who had been caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Wow, I thought you were loving. That's right. That was the loving thing to say.